tardes, declaro inaugurada la audiencia número... Good afternoon. I declare open the hearing number 16 that is entitled the health of family of disappeared people in Mexico. I am Julissa Mantilla Balcón, president of the Inter-American Commission. And in this hearing, we will have First Vice President Eduardo Rallon, second Vice President Margaret May Macaulay, and the Commissioner Esmeralda Rosemena de Triquiño. We also were also joined by the civil society and the uh, state and Maldonado, the representative of the offices of the High Commissioner for Human Rights in Mexico. We first, the civil society will be allotted 20 minutes, and then uh, the state as well, and Mr. Maldonado will speak during seven minutes, then the commission will have 20 minutes for its participation, and then we will have 10 minutes by the social, the civil society organizations and the state. We have interpretation into English and Spanish and subtitles. These are streamed via webcast and the recording is available in the original language and in English in the YouTube channel of the commission. So now we will give the floor to the civil society. Good afternoon, Madam. President, my name is Juan Carlos Gutierrez, Director of IDEA. It's a pleasure to greet you and to greet Commissioner Rosemena, also Rapporteur for Mexico. I would like also to thank the Inter-American Commission of Human Rights for granting this hearing and the members of the Inter-American Commission present. I would also like to greet the authorities of the Mexican state led by the ambassador and the authorities in the city of Mexico, the secretary of governance and other institutions. We would like to say that we requested this hearing in order to make visible the situation of human rights in the context of uh, forces appearing in Mexico, and their families and the access to health. We have detected a series of figures and data really alarming on the diseases caused by, uh, uh, related to the disappearance of people and the lack of assistance by the state that we would like to mention today. We have here the International Federation of uh, Human Rights, Mariposa de Collective Mostellan, Mariposa de Estellando, Madres Igualtecas, Busqueda de Desaparecidos, and the Collective hasta encontrarlos from the city of Mexico, apart from familias unidas por Mayarena. We are going to introduce some data and some expert reports, such as the one made by Carlos Peristán in the name, in behalf of the civil society and Per La Guerra. We would like to give the floor now, and we would like to thank Eliana Garcia. I would like to mention that this week, it was made public the new figure of disappeared cases in Mexico, and we have 9,120 people disappeared. This is the context we are speaking about, and for this reason, we believe that this is a highly necessary situation to review by the Commission. Eliana, you have the floor. Good afternoon, all the people present. We would like to make the presentation first of two studies that were carried out, those who are you are looking at in the screen. This is information gathered from May, April and May 2020 at the beginning of the pandemic, and when there were not there was no support by the state to the family of the disappeared persons. This added was drafted with 50 collectives in the Republic for a public of social um, organizations called Apoyo para Encontrarlos. We gather a sample of 
people in, with families between three and five people. So the figure represents between 6,000 and 15,000 for a wrong interpretation of the principle by persons for us to the compliance of the law. Here we have 1,300 women that are actively seekers. This is more than 65% of the people from which this information was gathered. And another stated a survey carried out by organization ideas to prepare these uh, hearing with 155 families of disappeared persons in order to know the impact of disappearance in health aspects. As we as you can see, we have different kinds of diseases. We have diabetes, cancer, tumors, paralysis, different problems, other um, such as other diseases such as insomnia, depression, anxiety, psychological um, disorders. And can we drop down the screen in the first study we are commenting on? There are, problems, there are people with uh, heart surgery and we have 460 people out of these 2000s that presented that have a, any kind of feces. This study carried out by IDEAS of 155 families, if you can go up again once more, we have that there is 98%, per, 98% that said that they used to sleep well before their family disappeared, their overall health was well, 76% said that they did not have any disease whatsoever before the disappearance of a relative. And I would like to say that 78.8 develop chronic diseases related to the disappearance of their relatives. The uh, diseases are the same to, to the ones that we had at the beginning. We mentioned at the beginning, they're there at the end of the chart. And the interesting aspect to underscore is that 73 of 155 went to the commission, executive commission for victims assistance in order to ask for assistance and only 25 receive a favorable uh, answer. They, as, they requested um, medical support and only 11.6 out of the total number and they did not receive the information why they were being derived to that institution. Can we drop down a little bit more? It's important to mention that many of those out of these 155, 111 contracted COVID, 33 requested support to the commission, but only some of them received support. There were expenses, medical expenses, therapy, surgeries, and only 18 of those who requested support received a reimbursement. Six only received a reimbursement out of the 18 that requested that reimbursement. And they are covering the expenses as relatives. This is a wrong construal of law, of the general law of victims, and this violates the people the people's rights. We will give the floor to Mr. Carlos Beristán to take the floor now. Thank you. I would like to greet everybody. Well, we have three factors thinking overall on the impact of what we have learned working with families of disappeared persons in Latin America and in Mexico, especially for disappearance in social and psychological terms, it's uh, 
it's a permanent um, suffering in which people cannot uh, do they cannot do the proper grieving because they do not know this the the end of that family of that relative so the first stage is the acceptance of the loss and the acceptance of the loss is something impossible in those cases because they do not have the truth they do there is no investigation of the cases and the lack of impunity is also very important from the psychological point of view for families and the second aspect to take into consideration is that psychological impact is multiple we are not only speaking in medical terms during the post-traumatic stress and other categories, but what we see in these cases is a lot of depression symptoms and depression associated to their post-traumatic symptoms and the loss of their relatives and also associated to somatic symptoms. There is part of that pain that was not process and they somatize these. They have several health disorders that are not well defined, the consumption of substances to um, confront pain. So there are several psychological aspects in, that we call comorbidity. It's not just one thing, but a, a set of psychological and health factors that are associated to this. We also know that the conditions of forced disappearance generate stress, chronic stress. This has an impact, negative impact on the immunity, facing the different diseases. And even though we know that it, there is not a relation, a causal relation, direct causal relation. There are multiple causes in these cases. The impact through the loss of or the loss of immunity or the reduction of immunity and the increase of stress, hypertension and all those heart problems are also uh, frequent in those cases because of the increase in the cardiovascular risk. Not only because of the loss, the uncertain loss, because, but because also of the, uh, the this, because they keep on seeking and it has a very important personal expense and all the things associated to the disappearance itself life this is life changing for women for the mothers the looking for them becomes the core of their life and this is a way for them to uh, confront the situation but it also exposes them to lots of traumatizing factors to see bodies to make such procedures which sometimes are not fruitful and this leads to greater stress added up to what they already suffered there are also changes in the families especially women there are changes the women did not do not have time for grieving and to accept the loss because they are focused on searching that that relative and they also have a, um, a difficult situation in their families and it has new it, it causes new ways of tension that they have to address the family consequences in these cases and these disappearing cases are particularly strong and harsh uh, in this issue and the overload. And finally, the changes in the lifestyle. This supposes a change that has consequences in terms of food, uh, the way they eat, insomnia, etc. Thank you, Dr. Crystal. Good afternoon. My name is Perla Ramos. I'm here to 
share this professional experience related to the emotional, physical health of uh, families of victims of forced disappearance. The members of these families suffer the immediate consequences of these disappearances. Not only are they subject of this uh, anguish due to the experience of a family member, but also they face economic uh, uh, hardship and emotional hardship. It's important to include the challenges that they will uh, face in the process of uh, denouncement, uh, searching and access to, just, to justice, which many times are long and violent, which also cause a deterioration on the health of people. It's necessary to have a comprehensive approach towards, towards health that recognizes all these consequences on the health of these victims' families and also addressing the particularities of each case. This violence has also had an impact on health related to long-term uh, issues such as uh, chronic pain, digestive problems, uh, migraines, uh, alterations of sleep and psychological uh, disorders. Also, we know that chronic stress uh, uh, undergone by these uh, families favors the uh, weakness, weakening of the immune system, which may lead to uh, chronic diseases and degenerative diseases as well. Dr. Perla, thank you very much. I give the floor to Alejandra, please. Sorry, because of, I am interrupting, but I have, we don't have much time. So Alejandra, uh, greetings to the Inter-American Commission. My name is Alejandra Perez. I represent the collective uh, of Familias Unidas Cocherit. And it's comprised of 145 families of victims of forced disappearances. And as defenders of human rights, we have provided many tasks of searching people. And as a result, we have uh, localized uh, uh, 15 uh, graves and 120 bodies recovered. In 2019, Santiago Perez Serra, activist and defender of human rights and member of this collective, in working to search for his son, suffered an accident falling from a very high uh, place. And in that grave, grave he, we found the remains of his sons. So as a result, he had a very severe pain on his, on his column and he had to receive surgery very serious surgery, which lead, led him to uh, stay in bed for two months. And the family did not have access to, to the uh, medical expenses. Regardless of having uh, advanced with the documents to ask for reimbursement. And up to date, these this consequences are part of his daily life with uh, severe pain in his uh, uh, legs. He has been diagnosed as a, a depressed depression and different um, affections, which he has suffered as a consequence of the disappearance of his son and his uh, ongoing search over three years. So if this fact is not victimizing, I wonder that uh, Digging up yourself the grave where you found your son and having an accident is not proof of this victimizing effect. So I request to uh, reconceptualize this uh, re-victimizing uh, concept and the several serious consequences on the health of in indirect and direct victims. Because if this cannot be proof, well, it cannot be uh, contested either. We should uh, review the criteria by the health institutions of uh, this uh, executive commission. Thank you. Familia Cano, go ahead. You have the floor first. You have, uh, you are muted. Good afternoon. 
we are Caño Montero. We are uh, siblings of Paulo Montero, who disappeared in October 2010 in Michoacán. And as a consequence of the forced disappearance of my brother, my parents, Gregorio Maria Esther, were affected uh, emotionally and physically, beginning with the constant anguish and depression that they uh, underwent until they were diagnosed with cancer. My mother was di diagnosed with uh, throat cancer and my father with uh, pulmonary cancer. And they both died without receiving uh, medical assistance by the Executive Commission on Victims Assistance. In both cases, my parents were uh, in defense and in the case of my father, despite requesting reinvestment for medical assistance, uh, it was uh, rejected. And in the case of my mother, in 2019, she was, uh, the, the expenses paid to her were, were uh, put to an end. So we were uh, very tight emotionally and we decided not to request uh, access to the uh, assistance fund to my mother again to the service commission and we we covered these expenses with our own money the responsibility of the state to guarantee victims their right to health in the case of my parents was infringed the executive commission of victims assistance which is uh, acting as a guarantor of health in is as for my parents as indirect victims uh, rejected their intervention under the uh, argument that these diseases were not related to the fact that their son had been uh, disappeared. While the commission is not a public health institution, it, show, it should address the health problems of my problems and it should have uh, provided health assistance to uh, thank you sandra thank you uh, i asked for the commission for two minutes so that sandra luz romance can can intervene you can use two minutes and we will uh we'll take them away from the following round thank you very much madam commissioner go ahead you have the floor Good afternoon. Greetings to the Inter-American Commission of Human Rights and the members of the state and the rest of the participants today. The collective of mothers from uh, mothers de Maltecas has 163 uh, files, and we were all the ones who started uh, the procedure to. Uh, search for bodies in these clandestine graves. Um, my colleagues from the collective are um, elderly people. They have 70 or 80, they are 70 or 80 years old. And right now they are um, suffering insomnia, uh, diabetes, uh, heart diseases. There is a mother who has a, is very uh, weak right now and she's not receiving any support by the Executive Commission on Victims Assistance, because uh, we ask that the Inter-American Court uh, supports us in this, in this moment to make visible which are the sufferings that we undergo that and which correspond to this uh, crime that we have suffered. Saying, uh, Overcoming this problem of not uh, accessing uh, assistance uh, is key to us because there are people who actually have lost their sight even. They, they cannot face this thing. So we want our voices to be heard so that the Executive Commission can effectively support us here. I repeat, there are mm, different mothers that are in a very serious uh, situation. Thank you very much. Uh, sorry for interrupting, and uh, thank you to the commission. In the reply, we can uh, make some proposals to this regard, and we thank you for your extra time. You have the floor, uh, representatives of the state. You have the floor for 20 minutes. 
Thank you very much, Madam President. Good afternoon to all commissioners. Uh, I greet very effectively a Commissioner Rapporteur for Mexico, Esmeralda Arosemena, and Commissioner Rallon, who I saw uh, have joined. I don't know if Commissioner Macaulay is already here, but anyway, I greet her as well. And also, uh, I greet Guillermo Fernando Maldonado. We're very pleased to see him at this hearing as well. Thank you very much to the civil society and all persons who are following this hearing. As you know, the Mexican state is made up of several institutions that follow up on this hearing. First of all, Jose, Jose Luis Flores Lepe from the uh, uh, Republic's uh, Office of, Gen of the General Attorney, uh, other members of the Office of the General Attorney, the Director of uh, International Human Affairs, uh, Contreras coordinator of the uh, address of human rights cases, uh, Maria Dolores Rosas of the General Director of Human Rights of the Foreign Affairs Ministry, and the head of the Executive Commission of Victims Assistance, who is central for this hearing. So I will give the floor to her to start with the state's intervention. Thank you very much, Madam Ambassador. Good afternoon, commissioners, representatives of the civil society organizations, human rights organizations, direct and indirect victims here today at this hearing. Before we start in my intervention, I would like to show my respect not only uh, to show my consideration and respect, but also to actually uh, show my deepest respect in the face of the struggle you have to access justice and especially to make visible the needs we have as a Mexican state in the access to justice and also in the comprehensive support that we should provide to the victims as a general. I will start my intervention by saying that the Mexican state, as we have uh, previously said, we recognize the forced disappearance as a serious violation of human, of human rights, which leads to different um, impacts to families, not only to direct victims. This impact should be addressed not only by the executive commission of victims assistance, but also should be addressed and supported by the national system of assistance to vict victims, which is the highest body to address these topics at the national and local levels. I would like to point out that when victims are forced to mobilize the same and themselves, and as Sandra Cano was saying, when they have to perform these tasks, the support to their health should be provided from all approaches, from all, from all uh, government uh, departments. So it's important that when we provide support to these victims, we have the national health system with us. This system should be present, providing support directly, and also should be part uh, of a more ordered system as a whole. However, we have several challenges ahead of us, and as a Mexican state, one of these challenges is the criteria related to the re-victimizing criteria, which has been mentioned here before. The jurisprudence of the Inter-American Court of Human Rights has itself established the uh, proof of this causal uh, relationship to, to establish the support to these victims. The court established that there are elements that should be uh, present to guarantee the rights to health. The Court of Hum the Inter-American Court of Human Rights establishes that the 
American Convention of Human Rights in Article 26 also provides that in uh, emerging cases, the state has to evaluate the provision of the systems. And it's not necessary to, as the commission, we know we're facing different challenges, but we also have to uh, comply with the uh, reg regulations which seek to guarantee the rights of victims through a series of elements or series of uh, institutional coordinations, which should guarantee immediate assistance in terms of health, particularly, and we should provide specific measures to guarantee victims uh, comprehensive support or assistance. For instance, if we uh, create a link with other institutions, the public hospitals should be uh, part of this uh, system to provide uh, support or the uh, National Commission to Protect Health also should be part. So in this sense, I would like to say that on Monday, in uh, the morning conference of uh, President um, López Obrador, it was mentioned that the national health system was being uh, implemented to work uh, jointly with the state, the federal uh, different governments and municipal governments to provide support to the population or also to create strategies to strengthen the most vulnerable people. And in this sense, we are speaking of victims as well. It's important to establish that for the federal government, Health is one of the key topics that we need to guarantee for victims. The Executive Commission of Victims Assistance is working with the uh, Health Secretariat to uh, guarantee health services to assist victims. We also uh, specifically address uh, victims by interviewing them first of all, in which people uh, mention which are their needs. This is a system that is quite similar to the PAPI from Colombia, which is a problem, a program uh, of health and psychological assistance. We have also identified that many times we need to have more information to avoid these types of consequences that impact the victim's health. And finally, I would like to comment that in case that victims require immediate medical attention, we open a, a case file so that they receive appropriate health assistance. They should have access to public systems of health when they are referred by the executive commission of the victim of assistance or any other centers which are the uh, all over the country of mexico there is also a list of uh, requests for this for instance for the commission itself there should be reference materials so that the health system provide assistance to the victims. When a person does not have a document attesting this and they uh, uh, see themselves as, as victims, they have to, to assist, tend to the first interview to, uh, to be provided with this assistance. Now, I will refer to the support that the Executive Commission is providing in the framework of uh, the uh, provision of resources for uh, uh, comprehensive assistance. This is subject to the budget of the Executive Commission, and in the case it is appropriate, it is provided according to this budget. In order to receive this, 
victims should submit different documents and this support is given in national currency and in through reimbursements. It's also important to say that according to the uh, victim's law, to be uh, presented with this uh, comprehensive assistance, there has to be a, a document that attests that the public institution in charge of this vic of this uh, service attests that they cannot provide it themselves. In case this support is given in uh, before and in, in, in advance, victims should attest should have the awareness on the requests and the requirements they should comply with. For instance, files to be, or, or the invoices or the tickets for different medicine or medical diagnosis that attest that the suffering is, com is directly related with this uh, crimes suffered. Right now, with the purpose to guarantee, guarantee that the victims do not face these hardships, the Executive Commission has authorized uh, institutions to cover these different expenses. In 2020, the WHO uh, declared the coronavirus pandemic and There was an agreement on last year related to the victim's law as a complementary uh, mechanism to um, to treat, uh, to address corona coronavirus. There was 26 uh, collective resolutions passed that address 4,000 victims so that they are eligible to uh, receive aid related to food and housing and medical assistance. I would like to specifically say that when I started working at this position, one of the things I directly mentioned is that we cannot be uh, we, we cannot have different parameters for this uh, revictimizing uh, concept since uh, there are different diseases and disorders that are clearly connected to this we have to make sure that victims have access to the necessary uh, assistance and this is why that we have tried to uh, f make more flexible these types of uh, procedures. For instance, as Sandra Luz was mentioning, this same situation that request that required surgery due to the uh, searches that they were carrying out, the Executive Commission uh, passed a resolution considering vulnerability. We know that we face different challenges, but we have to uh, work so that all direct and indirect victims have access to uh, justice and also to uh, medical assistance and also a comprehensive uh, uh, reparation. That would be all on my part. I thank all commissioners and the organizations of the civil society uh, different experts, the human rights organizations. And once again, I present my respects to the victims have shared the testimonies. This, this helps us to strengthen our actions to guarantee the rights of victims. Thank you. Is the state over? Okay, so you have five minutes that you may use for the second part as well. I will now give the floor to Mr. Guillermo Fernández Maldonado. 
Thank you very much. I would like to greet the commissioners, the state, the civil society, and the family of the victims. I am here as the capacity of the High Commissioner of the um, United Nations for Human Rights in Mexico. I am not under oath uh, to speak about the situation of right to health of of uh, the family of uh, four disappeared persons in Mexico. Nothing in my declaration has to be a waiver uh, to my privilege of the United Nations. I would like to thank the Inter-American Commission for this hearing at the times where the phenomenon of disappearance, of the forced disappearances near is nearly reaching 100,000 people. This is, we are calling a poll because we are, uh, we are facing a brutal flow of people that are disappeared. And it has been recently recognized by some authorities, especially in the uh, federal administrative authority. We have documented the situation that Mexico is facing, guided by a constructive spirit and good faith, the committee will issue its report in which it will address to the state important recommendations that should be implemented without delay. The problem of disappearance has lots of perspectives, prevention, combat of impunity, the protection of those looking for justice, memory, the reparation of the victims, the non-repetition warranties by but this is also extended to the enjoyment of social rights that is uh, especially so when the person who disappeared is a person who is sustaining the household. And some authorities do not uh, have responsibility, do not claim responsibility on this situation. The right to have a specific issue when there is a disappeared person who has a relative who has been disappeared as well. We have to recognize that the enjoyment of the right to health is affected by actions or omissions of the state. The suffering, continuous suffering that leads to the disappearance of uh, family has really strong effects on health and experts have alerted on this situation the economic, social, and cultural rights, and these reports drafted in 2015 has a very important uh, principles in this matter. The principles make reference to health uh, of the families and those people looking for their relatives. The Committee of Economic, Social, and Cultural Rights of the UN in Mexico mentioned as a concern the difficulties found on a daily basis by the families of the disappeared person in the enjoyment of their economic, cultural, and social rights. Facing this, they recommended the state to warranty the access of the and the implementation of support programs to the families, avoiding the re-victimization of the beneficiaries and the measures of support have to be implemented together with the beneficiaries in order to warranty their uh, the response to their needs and to allow them to enjoy their economic, social, and cultural rights, in particular, the right to health and education. We have to add international jurisprudence that in the cases of forced disappearance, it adds the protection of right to health in favor of the victims. The cases in Mexico, both in the universal and the inter-American system, they have included this consideration. That is why it's essential that in Mexico, there are specialized protection systems to health and the uh, consequences that are generated on the victims are recognized to they, that they have a gender approach 
especially because of age and they we also should drive measures that have an impact in the access to health and those related to the recognition of the legal situation of the disappeared person in Mexico, mothers who have some relative who has disappeared have expressed in several locations that the greatest fear to death is not derived from the death itself, but to die without found, finding its uh, relative. Since this is a constant search, the protection of the right to health can contribute to extend the quality and the perspective of life of people. This feature adds importance. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Guillermo Fernandez Maldonado. The Inter-American Commission starts. I will ask first the first Vice President Estuardo Rallon whether he has comments. Yes, thank you, Madam President. I would like to read my colleagues, the civil society, the state, and the representative of the United Nations. I would like to first express my concern for these serious crises. I add to many of the comments that in the United Nations have expressed, this is a situation which has a very serious uh, aspect. And on that basis, I have some questions. To the civil society, I would like to ask, I would like to ask whether they can broaden on the impact, the differentiated impact that forces appearance have in terms of gender and age. I would like to see whether there is greater detail of that fact. I would thank you for that. And if there any kind of geographic and economic barrier that prevents them from accessing the executive commission for victims assistance. That are Those are my questions for the civil society and that is my intervention. Thank you. I will give the floor now to the country rapporteur, Commissioner Esmeralda Arrosemena. Thank you, Madam President. Good afternoon, everybody. I would like to respectfully greet the persons who have provided their testimony, their life testimony of what these represent in your life. The civil society for placing this topic in our debate, in our agenda. When we speak about the right to health, and this relation that has been made uh, due to the research that she have undergone and the two experts that have the chance to contribute Sus conocimientos. with their ideas and knowledge. Yo quiero expresarles que I would like to express that it has been very significant for me, this way to establish a relation with the right to health as a right understood within this uh, conception, within this uh, integrity of this concept. But you have placed a focus on the need to pose it from the proper sona principle, from that proper sona principle and the lack of answer and the difficulties to have an answer that she had presented and you have had in this journey, along this journey, you qualify it and you name it as not recognizing that proper sona principle when identifying the victim's condition due to the disappearance of a relative. Along those lines, the question I would make the representative, I believe it was Martha who explained with great deal of detail 
when it comes to this regulation of that either identifies the elements to say that the fact was derived or not from the victimizing event that the health situation is derived from the victimizing event because what we have explained us is precisely that the lack of answer the lack of response is in that response in the fact that there is no answer at all in the fact that this is not part of the victimizing event so it doesn't fall within this category of victim so i would like to have that i would like to ask that because i believe that if it's there that we require an identification of those elements taking into consideration this vision of wholeness of, of which Guillermo was speaking as representative of the High Commissioner. This is also very important to understand this reality. And undoubtedly, Carlos said so, what is what they leave is a grieving that is perpetual and that has to have an impact in the life of people. Physical, mental, psychological impact for the continuity of the everyday life. And that is what we have listened to in these testimonies. So for me, we need to determine, Marta has also said that when she assumed her office, her position, she is speaking about flexibilizing. Well, I believe it's important to reflect on these issues and whether it is necessary to have uh, to hold a dialogue between the technicians, the experts in these matters that can lead to an answer, a prompt answer, an integral response, a response so that the qualification of the categorization of these circumstances is, does not have to wait any longer due to the connotation of these facts. Thank you, Madam Commissioner. Thank you, Commissioner. I would like to give the floor. I will use the floor now. When the civil society started, Mr. Carlos Gutierrez said there were 99,120 um, people disappeared. And this belongs to official figures, right? 99,120 people disappear, it's at least the same amount of family and every family can have two, three or four people. This is really a huge number that in first place, in the second place, I would like to remind you that the forced disappearance, once the families look for their relatives and they are hoping and they do not appear, that is also a re-victimization. And I believe that we are speaking of the seriousness of this fact. Secondly, I believe Diana Garcia presented this study on the impacts and I believe I request you to send it to the commission analyzing the impacts and it was a a figure of 1300 women that were seeking a relative because this makes me think on the figures and the history due to the gender analysis analysis most of the disappeared persons are men and the people who are looking for them are women so how they are uh, implementing a gender approach in the response because that's the objective of the hearing i believe that is also very key it's important i would also like to take a topic that the violence and discrimination 
a woman that is looking for his husband, her victimization doesn't start there. Probably all throughout her life has suffered several victimization. And I will, I understand that here there's a specific mechanism for, for this appearance, but including this gender approach implies recognizing the particularities of the person that is looking for their relatives. And Carlos Beristan also was mentioning that, Carlos, probably you can send us information on this specific impacts, these impacts on the health of women, but also in the cost when they do not comply with their gender roles and they do not care the rest, they are uh, generally, um, they have greater impacts because they are not caring for their loved ones. So I would like to know how the state is answering to these. I would also like to ask the organizations whether they have detailed information on this topic, whether they can send it to us. In relation to the previous one, sexual violence, and this is very well documented, is produced against women who look for their relatives. Sexual aggressions, violations, impacts on their sexual and reproductive health. Um, people that end up uh, pregnant when they are, uh, they face sexual violence when they are looking for their family. So which is the policies of the state to face the situation, to address the situation? Those are my questions for now. I have many more, but we have um, we have time. But we, if there are colleagues, if there are questions from my colleagues, we have time. In this kind of uh, impacts, I would like to also speak about this differential look. I mean, it's not this differential perspective. It's not the same urban women and indigenous women. And we also have to have this perspective of elder women. The story of the human rights we women of uh, trials in Argentina, in Colombia, of women who become seekers, who look for the disappeared relatives for 20, 30 years, and they contribute to the consolidation of standards in that search. So I would like to know how this gender approach adds up to this age approach as well. And we are speaking about health, undoubtedly, but I would also like to include a ESCR perspective, because if we know that these women have had less access to education, less access to remunerated work, all their ESCR rights are affected women have less access to pensions, to retirement pensions, to compensation for their uh, husbands probably. So how can we answer to the situation? So I will uh, stop here and I will give the floor to the uh, special rapporteur Soledad Garcia Munoz so that she can go on with the questions. Thank you, Madam President. Good afternoon, everybody the honorable representation of the Mexican state, our, uh, the ambassador, the civil society experts, and the honorable representative of the United Nations. I would like to first underscore the importance of this hearing because it is innovative and it's necessary not only for Mexico, but in general for the countries of our region who we who are which are really exposed to that unfortunate phenomena of forced disappearance of persons. If something characterizes the victims and the family of the victims of forces appearance of persons is their resilience. And sometimes we ask ourselves how they have done all throughout this year. I'm thinking of uh, mothers of Plaza de Mayo, grandmothers of Plaza de Mayo. How have they made to uh, survive to so much pain? So this hearing brings a very interesting opportunity to reflect on the need to place the right of 
to help uh, to help of victims of forces appearing in the center at the core of our reflection and in the at the core of our human rights agenda we know that this is a uh, an integral right that belongs to an emotional right and i it's really difficult to imagine that such well-being when you are constantly raving so that is why my reflection is asking parties in this hearing which concrete measures which specific measures the state of mexico based on what this hearing brings to the table uh, to which extent will the state of Mexico be, will be committing to some measures? And this is a special rapporteur who has, which has been working on the right to health. And we can help on that, on drafting that specific plan that may materialize all my solidarity and my thankfulness for bringing to the table of the commission this approach that makes me think of a dear friend who is not here, Hilda Pacheco from Costa Rica, who really worked as a psychologist for what she called the psycho-legal approach, attending to victims of torture or victims of serious human rights violation. You can count on the commission and on this rapporteurship to, for everything, anything you need. I would like to express my gratitude and my solidarity. Thank you, dear rapporteur. Now we will give the floor to the civil society for uh, 10 minutes. Thank you very much, Madam President. And thank you very much to Commissioner uh, Esmeralda, uh, Rapporteur uh, Soledad Garcia, and the different representatives. We are really looking forward to the report of the disappeared persons. I wanted to greet Marta Rodriguez. We celebrate her appointment, but also I think it's important to mention that we have uh, requested a meeting over for three months so far, and this has not been provided. So. I wanted to point out that it will be it would be very important to have that meeting to work with them. We would also like to highlight that we have a proposal for the Inter-American Commission. That proposal is to propose the Mexican state a technical roundtable of experts in health, psychosocial assistance, and the uh, participant participants of the uh, executive commission of victims assistance and so that we can uh, send a report into an inter-american commission to establish clear guidance and guiding principles to assist the victims it's uh, evident that we have uh, great opposing positions as to how to address this problem and it's also a proof uh, that there was no uh, sufficient assistance from the testimony of the victims today. So we wanted to propose this so that the states can accept this proposal for this working uh, table. And we would also like to request the Special Rapporteur on Economic, Social, Cultural and Environmental Rights to help us to establish public policies Along those lines, I want to give the floor to Elena Garcia so that she can uh, she can speak about the uh, the executive commission and also then we give the floor to Alejandra Perez and Laura Guriel to respond to the different questions that were asked for the civil society. We can't hear you or unmuted. Yes, I'm sorry. I would like to mention that the main problem is that ever since the Executive Commission on Victims Assistance was created, none of its heads or people who were leading the commission know the victim's law. We actually have now different testimonies with um, family members, which 
are told that the executive commission has to uh, provide reparation but not compensation but actually in the victim's law compensation is reparation so what they are doing is not applying this principle and this from this stems the wrong interpretation of article 8 so this is one of the most serious things that are continuing happening. Also, they passed a regulation that annuls the law and they have implemented the law according to that regulation. The law provides for that in Article 5, there are principles under which all assistance uh, should be provided and one of them has to do with the uh, cost-cutting gender-based approach, which is not being applied, as many other things which are not being applied. I would like to mention as well that what has been presented is not just uh, provisions that were uh, included in the law, but actually in the regulation. For instance, in Article 3 of this general law related to medical system, what they have done is to request a registration of uh, emergency situation. And actually victims have died because uh, the executive commission says it's not their competence to assist them because this is not stemming from uh, this victimizing um, fact. The commissioner does not say that this was established in January 2014. And from then to now, the Mexican state has not convened one single meeting of this uh, body and neither has this uh, new uh, government, incumbent government. So how will they provide assistance if, if this system does not work? And also something else they have not complied with is to create the areas specialized areas for victims as the law provides in each of the departments of the federal government. So this is why we request that please request the state of Mexico to put in motion the national system to assist victims to create all specialized areas that should be created. A commissioner uh, mentioned uh, women. Yes, women are the main affected section of the population. These are the seekers, the searchers. And as we have told you, the data is terrible. There are no geographical restrictions for assistance because there are departments of this executive commission in all 31 federal departments. So I would like to say, and I will say this with all my respect so that they realize what is going on, they have convened a meeting on January the 7th with victims. And when they went there, the police uh, received them. This is what happening in this country. There is a terrible omission and the law is being infringed. Alejandra, please, Alejandra Perez, just very briefly because we have three minutes left. Thank you. Well, as uh, Adding to what my comrade was saying, well, there are many obstacles, not geographical obstacles, but there is one that there is no uh, health department. So we have to depend on the decision on um, Mexico, on the Mexican government. So I want to uh, really request Marta Julia Rodriguez since she uh, is providing good faith, if she can commit to this dialogue table on working group. And I wanted to request if she can review the different criteria being implemented by the head of the health uh, sector, because it is him who is um, rejecting health assistance with the aim to uh, put an end to the access of this uh, emergency situations, uh, as assistance for the situations. So so if 
of course they there is a cooperation a link between different institutions but actually you have to pay for each and every medicine you receive and sometimes uh, these institutions have not uh, access to uh, to medical devices thank you sorry for interrupting laura uh, please to, to conclude you only have one minute left thank you very much for this opportunity i wanted to highlight well i i heard many things today but yes we are 99,120 people um, my eldest daughter um and also the son of my daughter disappeared. So in order for you to see the size of this problem, yes, most of us are women. The mothers at 50 years old start uh, looking for their, for the children. And uh, some of them have even different um, heart problems, high blood pressure stomach aches, uh, different symptoms, which are very, very serious. I was also uh, listening to the question by Soledad. How were we able to survive this? Well, this situation uh, that is experiencing the families, well, it actually, we don't feel our symptoms because the fact that we cannot find our loved ones is a greater pain and also i was uh, listening to marta juridia um you heard all the processes that she was listing well this process last or take years and years this uh internal uh, expenses and um exhaustion and this will not be useful for the families and up to date this has not been useful at all well we commit ourselves um, to send all the information to the inter-american commission to uh, answer all the questions related to gender and the update data and the report that we drafted related to covid and the impact on the families of disappeared people we look forward to the reply of this federal government for this uh, dialogue uh, group that we are proposing. Thank you very much. We give the floor to the state for 10 minutes. Thank you very much. Uh, I give the floor uh, Barbara Pacheco, then Marco Antonio Maya Sanchez of the National Commission of uh, Searches. And lastly, Marta Judilla. Uh, Rodriguez, the head of the Executive Commission of the Victims of Assistance. We give the floor to uh, Barbara. Hello, uh, just a, a greeting to the families that are here today. Uh, we acknowledge their great task that they are uh, doing, especially the mothers who are working to uh, foster all the implementation of all mechanisms for uh, the finding of disappeared people. We have worked for many decades and we have seen that this task has uh, fell, has fallen on, on the victims' families. And this has a, as a consequence that the, the families cannot address their other responsibilities. Also, this added to uh, the different uh, challenges, this has created a health impact. So the state wants to redress this vulnerability. While the executive commission has already explained the, ex the existing mechanisms to address this topic, we acknowledge there are still uh, great challenges ahead, which are a priority for this government. So from this uh, secretariat, in cooperation with different uh, institutions and the executive commission, we will convene a group of experts and members of government to draft a roadmap to address this topic for victims and to see the impacts that the families uh, undergo. So we 
uh, repeat that we are committed to this. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good afternoon. Greetings to the commissioners. Thank you for granting me the word. I would like to participate and to, I would like to respond to some of the questions posed by the commission and to explain in a brief way that from the National Commission of uh, Business Systems, we are the ones who participate in the search of the searches of those families. Um, as it was mentioned in this hearing up to date, according to the data in the National Registry of Disappeared Person, we have, and which is updated in real time, we have 99,157 people reported as disappeared and not able to localize. As commission of searches, we carry out actions together with the family trying to warranty their participation in their search activities. And we are aware of the uh, health disorders that page that these people present and we try to according to the possibilities in the municipalities we we try to have an ambulance so as to pay attention to anything that could uh, occur within the actions of search and we resort to the state so that they can provide this attention in case there is an accident. We know that it is necessary to have a gender perspective when carrying out these uh, searches and it's necessary to have this into consideration. Part of these questions mentioned by the commission will be part of the answer that we will send as a Mexican state and we will uh, give these the attention to this topic. Thank you once more. Thank you for the space. In relation to the question posed by the commissioners, I would like to establish that within our registries of the Executive Committee for Attention of the Victims, the affectations, the impacts on health, but other also impact from a social point of view are related to women. The uh, are women the ones who look for families, but they are also the ones who take care of the children of the disappeared persons, and they are they are the ones facing a context of violence based on the disappearance of their uh, children, but they also have domestic violence. Sometimes they are not denounced by themselves, and this is very important. We have identified them and we need to generate a space for uh, support, as is the case that we support with the organization IDEAS. It is also relevant to express the following, even though it's uh, true that the Executive Commission for Victims Assistance is within the general victims law to in the court there is also uh, there there are also institutions that should support the victims and these state committees should also provide the support in terms of health in terms of a psychosocial approach and these are the institutions that receive the victims and they are the ones who face the challenges because the crime um, index is there where they are they have to be present i would also like to establish that there are an update of guidelines that are going to be published is in terms of has to the help resources established in the commission to victims and according to the law as it was mentioned by eliana garcia i would like to mention according to the uh, general law on victims in its articles 36 and 37 it establishes that the services of medical attention will be provided freely by the state and if 
they are lacking, they will be provided by the Executive Commission for the Victims uh, Assistance. And this is not contrary to what was uh, expressed before. It's not contrary to the health regulations in the General Victims Law, and these are being updated. On the other hand, in relation to the question posed by Julissa Maltisha, I would like to establish that we believe it's necessary to have visibilization policies facing the needs that the we that women facing this differential approach, but also other groups in situation of vulnerability in the context of forced disappearance of persons. It is not likely that women that are in this situation of violence undergoing such violence in which they are indirect victims in a context of disappearance, they also identify a domestic violence context and when they are confronted to the situation in generally there are a series of frictions that are not taken into consideration that is why it's really important to have a differential approach where not everything has to derive from the executive committee of victim assistance but it has to be centered on a health systems that support the victims with the needs that they have and so that they can be near closer to these kinds of situations because there are different impacts in specific cases where we cannot generalize but we have to work based on these particularities and the specificities and in effect as it was said by commissioner stuart there are lots of geographical barriers in terms of access to health services the executive commission has tried to reduce commissioning the staff in each of those institutions so that they get closer to the victims of flexibilizing some kinds, some parts of the services. I would also like to tell Alejandra Juarez that one of the elements is to review this standard because it is within the neck, the CAC, the causal link, and it's to purport to offer the health services in order to not to create a greater impact and violations on human rights. So I believe it's important to establish these kinds of elements and facing the expressions to me, Juan Carlos, Eliana, we can work some with someone, but we work directly to the victims that is why why i came a little bit later i was attending to victims in the state of sinaloa and i am talking to them identifying their needs we want to communicate directly to the victims in order to provide an integral support okay we've reached the end of the hearing i don't know if sandra cano and sandra Luzno roman are here are still here I don't know if they're still connected or not. Anyhow, yes, they are here. Just to see if they are listening to me. Okay. As I was saying, the Inter-American Commission would like to thank the state for being present in this hearing. We really value the presence of the representatives of the state, but also of the ambassador Banius but, and the Inter-American Commission is at your disposal to support this working table, these encounters, these meetings that allow us to uh, face such a serious, such a painful situation. And here, together with the Commissioner Esmeralda Arosemena, I will ask you for a minute because I have a connection issue. Just one second. I'm sorry, but these things happen. I was saying that together with Commissioner Arosemena that leads the strategy as country rapporteur and with the experience she has, we are at your disposal to facilitate these meetings and these working tables. 99,120 99, people disappeared. This um, same amount of families of grievings that are suspended and are re-victimized once they are looking for their relatives. Lots of absence 
present here. I would like to finish asking Laura Curiel the name of her disappeared daughter. She's Daniela Maria, Maria Sanchez Curiel. She disappeared in 2015. Thank you, Laura. We have just one minute. I wanted to hear the name. Alejandra Perez, can you tell us the name? Yes, Santiago Loir Perez Reyes disappeared in June 2017 in Mexico. Sandra Cano, can you tell us the name? Yes, my, my brother is Pablo Cesar Antonio Cano Montero, disappeared in 2010 in Lázaro Cárdenas, Michacuan. Thank you, Sandra Luz Román, can you tell us the name? My daughter is Yvette Melissa Flores Román, disappeared in Iguala Guerrero by municipal police. I would like to respectfully ask to mention them so as not to forget them because in this hearing, there is great pain from each of you. And I would like to offer my respect. And I understand that this task is not easy at all, but that is why we are at your disposal to support this process of yours. Laura also spoke about these generations of absences, the daughter that is not here, the grandson that doesn't know her um, mother. And I would like to remember Garretón, an icon of human rights. He was asking Chile, why do you keep on with this topic? This appearance when occurred a long time ago and Roberto said, it didn't, they didn't happen as in uh, 20 years. There are still happening if there is not justice, reparation and truth. My respect to each of you because you represent other women, mothers, and when one of them die, they uh, entrust this task upon other persons. So the commission is here with you, supporting you. I declare this, this hearing closed. Have a nice afternoon. Thank you. Thank you.